All right, so let's dive into pipe size. We talked about fittings, and let's let's dive into pipe size a little bit. So it's going to be important to understand particular pipe sizes for for fixtures. Sometimes I've seen homeowners they just they just didn't know. And for example, like kitchen kitchen drain has to be two inches. Uh, sometimes it's run inch and a half or you're in an old existing house and the, it was back in the day it was ran inch and a half so they thought they could put it back. Which in the grand scheme of things, if you're repairing or you're just fixing in line, then sure, you know, leave the inch and a half up there where the sink is and just tie it in with an inch and a half and put it back the way it was. That's just kind of considered a repair. If you go tear the whole thing out, you should probably put it back in two inch. But anyways, Diving back into into pipe sizes, let's start with toilets. Toilets is a three inch line, a single toilet, up to three toilets. You can have on a three inch line. Now, if you get to four toilets, so if you're like doing a whole house or something, and uh, you've got a whole bunch of toilets, uh, restrooms, powder rooms going up through the house, at the point where all four of those enter the one main trunk line going out. It would need to be four inch. But if you only have three toilets in the house, you should be able to run your whole house off a three inch main. So you'll need a three inch regardless for each toilet, but that entire main going out can stay three inch as well. So just keep that in mind when you're sizing your pipe. Your vent for your toilet has to be two inch, which is great in a sense because a two inch vent, which I'll show you here in the code in a minute, uh, we'll vent an entire bathroom. So if you can figure out a way to get all of your vents to come up and tie into that one two inch and go out, you're good to go. Just that one vent. So here are drainage fixture units values. So this is the minimum uh, size trap trap arm. So it, you can't re ever reduce. So once you've started with a with a pipe size, you can't go say from two inch to inch and a half. So once you see what the trap arm size is, well, that's the size that the drain needs to be minimum unless it's stated here in the in this uh, table. So I'll kind of run through a little bit here. So like a bathtub or a bath shower. So something that, that has a, is, a, is a tub can be inch and a half. So you can do an inch and a half all the way to the three inch main that goes out. You could inch and a half down into another two inch line as long as you have your vent in the proper location. And your vent for that can be inch and a half. You come down to, um, let me go. So like a lavatory, which would be like a vanity sink can be as small as an inch and a quarter. I never, very, I very rarely ever see that. It's usually always inch and a half. Same thing, inch and a half. You know, you can have an inch and a half vent going out the top, inch and a half drain tying into your three inch or a two inch line somewhere down the road. You have a um, kitchen. So kitchen and laundry are big ones because this is where I usually would, would find that, that there would be like a, some type of correction that just a homeowner did not know. And that's a kitchen and a laundry need two inch. So it shows on here that the trap arm can be inch and a half. So if I grab this, go back over here to full view. If I grab the Santee, for example, and this is in a vertical position, and this way right here would take you to your sink, right? So go over here, go down, have your trap, go up to your sink, right? This coming off the top would be your vent. This coming off the bottom would be your drain. So this right here is your trap arm, right? Once you turn right here and go down, you're in a drain. So this line right here for a kitchen, and most all people use two inch as well, because your trap arm, your standpipe should be two inch as well. But for a kitchen, this would be two inches, and you could do inch and a half reduced out to your trap arm. But the, everything from your drainage from this point right here down needs to be two inch. So just keep that in mind if you're doing it new. Um, like I said, repairs to an existing situation and just kind of put it back the way it was should be okay. It's worked that way for how many years, so it should be fine. But if we're talking about bringing things up to code, doing it the right way, you need two inch for your kitchen. So let's hop back over to our 
table here. So we talked about laundry. So this, this number two that's right next to the domestic number two, that is come down here to note number two. It says provide two inch minimum drain. So that's kind of what I was just showing you there. So we have water closets or toilets, and you can see that they're three inch. All of them require a three inch line. So as soon as you have a toilet, three inch, and then usually everything just kind of dives right into that. Wanted to find a floor drain. So here's a floor drain. So floor drains require two inch. Sometimes people think that an inch and a half line is okay and there's not a lot of water going in there. But to meet meet code, you would need to be two inch. So two inch for your laundry, two inch for your kitchen, two inch for your floor drain, three inch for your um, let's go back here, three inch for your toilet. An inch and a half, inch and a quarter, but I would stick with inch and a half for your for any of your sinks. Um, if you had a laundry sink, uh, laundry like uh, clothes wash sink, if you have your uh, bathroom sinks, any other types of sinks, inch and a half is fine. So that's just kind of a, a quick quick rundown on pipe sizing. So when you're when you're heading to the store, you get your fittings. You also want to get your pipe. Make sure you like size properly.